Hey, hey guys, what's happening? Today let's look at the algebraic phrases. Um, algebra, basically you can define as expressing problems with, sim you know, not problems, let's call them puzzles. Puzzles. How about puzzly poos? It sounds a little more friendly. Okay. All right, expressing puzzly poos with symbols, then solving the puzzly poos. All right. And what, what the, everybody complains about algebra, like, oh, the word problems are so, oh, word, oh, they, you know, and one, you know, one crazy thing, I, I used to teach at a government high school, and I, one thing I noticed that I'm sure does not happen as much as in homeschooling is that uh, one of the reasons why so many kids in government schools cannot do word problems is because they literally cannot read the word problems. That's absolutely true. I got, I tried to get kids, because I kept having going, what's going on the kids can't do word problems at all so let's just read these out loud like you know charlie go ahead and read this out loud and like he couldn't read i'm, not, I'm talking about a 15 year old i go to the next person um the they they're all taught with like this flashcard sight word methods so they can't sound out anything so they don't know half what they're reading anyway thank your mom and dad for homeschooling you or grandma or whoever's doing it for teaching you phonics and not sight words that's a disaster anyhow okay that's what algebra is, solving problems. So let's actually, we're, what we're gonna do today is give ourselves tools and practice the tools so you can read a little paragraph and then s turn it into an equation and so on, okay? That's what we're done. All right, so let's go first off, let's go sum, difference, product, and quotient, okay? A sum is the answer to an addition problem. A difference is an answer to a subtraction problem. A product is the answer to a multiplication problem. And a quotient is the answer to a division problem. There you go. Make sure you know those because that'll help when we're looking at phrases, okay? So let's go, we're going to go a word phrase, then we're going to translate this and write it as an algebraic phrase, okay? The sum of a number and seven. How would you write that as an algebra phrase? You'd go the sum means I'm going to add a number, I don't know what it is, I'll just call it x or n or whatever, and seven, there's my phrase, okay. So in other words, before, when you've been doing, um, you know, 2x plus 5 equals 12 or whatever, what they're going to do is they're going to write you a little sentence and you're going to change the sentence into 2x plus 5 equals 12. Make sense? Okay, let's do another. The sum of a number and negative 7. Well, the sum of a number and negative 7, you could say x plus negative 7. All right? Or if you didn't want to do that, you could just go, okay, that's x minus 7. Same thing, right? Adding a negative and, and subtracting, same thing, okay? Seven greater than a number. Well, let's put the number there first. I've got a number, and I need something seven greater than that. That's going to be greater than, right? It won't be, you know, subtracting or multiplying, you know. When somebody says to you, gee, what's seven greater than three? You go, I don't know, three plus seven, ten. Same thing here, okay? Let's try this one. A number increased by seven. That's the same thing, okay, same exact thing, all right? How about seven less than a number? Now here's the tricky part. A lot of times when people, people see this phrase, they go seven less than a number. Oh, seven minus X, no, okay? You have a number, let's say it's X. Seven less than that, you'll say minus seven. There you go, okay? A number decreased by seven? What's 10 decreased by seven? Three, right, okay? So if you're going to go 10 minus 7, you're going to go x minus 7 if you don't know what the number is. Okay, all right? How about another one? The product of a number and 7. Product means to multiply, right? So you just go, okay, 7 times x. There we go. Twice a number. Well, that's going to be a number, and then twice that will be just 2 times x, right? Okay, how about 9 times the opposite of a number? Ooh. You could go nine times, you could do a, put a dot here, or you could put parentheses. The, a number would just be the x, right? But the opposite of the number would be minus x. So nine times minus x, that would be the opposite of nine x, right? In other words, this is a positive nine, that's a negative, a positive times a negative is a negative. There you go, okay? The sum of uh -oh, twice a number and negative eight. Okay, so let's do this. If it helps you, go the sum. I got twice a number, and I got negative 8. Well, the sum tells you to add. Add. I got twice a number. There's twice my number. I'm going to add that to negative 8. Yoink, right there. Or, of course, you could just say 2x 
minus eight. Same thing, okay? Is that good? All right? Five times the sum of twice the amount. Uh, that's is about the hardest you're going to get for a while, okay? So let's bust it down into pieces here. Five times something. All right, sum, I got twice a number, and I got negative eight. Okay, so let's do this part first. I'm going to do five times something. Okay, what is it? The sum of twice a number and negative eight. So let's just hunk this hunk of junk in here. The sum of, oh, it's going to be a plus. Twice a number, 2x. I'm going to add that to negative eight plus negative eight. Okay, you know what? Plus a ne negative eight, I'm not going to write that. Plus negative eight. I'm sophisticated and cool enough now. Or as homeschoolers say, I'm sophisticated and groovy enough now to do this. It's just adding a negative eight will be the same thing as subtracting eight. There you go, okay. You'll do a bunch of these and practice them until you get them, okay? Let's try another group here. The sum of a number and nine. You know what, in fact, I'm just gonna, you do these. Go ahead, do them one by one. As soon as you're finished, hit the uh, unpause button. Okay, the sum of a number and nine. I'm gonna go n this time, n plus nine. A number decreased by nine, n minus nine. The opposite of a number, opposite of a number, decreased by six, decreased by six, there you go. The sum of the opposite of number and negative three. So I got the sum, I got the opposite of a number, and I got negative three. Sum means I'm gonna add, oh wait a minute, but I'm adding a negative three I'm just going to put subtract 3, same thing. Then I have, what am I adding to the negative 3? The opposite of a number, that's negative n, or x, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. All right, let's try another bunch of these. Okay, you ready? Let's pause it right now and try those three. See what you get. Look at your notes if you want to, to kind of guide you. Okay, the product of 5 times a number and 6. Oh, boy. I got a product. I got 5 times a number. And I got six. Okay, so something's gonna be a product. So I'm just gonna put a multiply there. Five times a number, that's my first thing. So five times a number, five X. And I'm multiplying that by six. There you go. And by the way, if you want to, you can just go ahead and multiply these, right? What's five times six? 30. So X would just be the 30 X, right? All right, pause it and try the next one. Four times the sum of twice the number and negative three. Okay. I know these get to a point where you go, oh, I can't do this, this is so complicated. Just break it down into pieces, all right? Four times something, what is it? It's a sum. I got a twice of a number and I got negative three. Okay, I'll stop right there. So four times some hunk, all this from here to there, all right? I'm just gonna put four times, I'm gonna put big parentheses here, right? All right, something in there. The sum of sum, okay, that's a plus there, okay? Twice a number, two x. And negative three, I'm gonna add this to negative three. And of course, and here you could of course put not plus negative three, but just put, you know, minus three. And there you go, that's it. All right, one more. The product of negative two and the sum of a number of, <laughs> okay. I got a product. What's the product of? I got two and then the sum of a number and five, woof. The product of negative two and something else. So that means I'm gonna multiply negative two times something else, right? So that takes care of this part and that part. In here, I've got the sum of a number and five. Okay, sum is plus, and it's a number is in, and then there's a five, boom, there we go. Okay, that's all there is to it. All right, not easy at first, but keep, keep going. Eventually we'll be using these to solve puzzly poos later on, okay. Go to page 270 and try those and pause it when you're ready to go. Okay, let's just talk about this together, all right? Um, the sum of a number and negative four will be n minus four, or x minus four, or whatever. At this point, don't, don't put x plus negative four. Just go ahead and change it. Go ahead and do that in your head if you think about it. Just go ahead and change x plus negative four. Just put x minus four. Much easier to mess with. Okay, be a number reduced by four. Well, what is 10 reduced by four? Six, right? So a number, in other words, 10 minus four. So a number reduced by four is n minus four, okay? C, the sum of the opposite of a number and negative three. Well, the sum of the opposite of a number 
if it's just n, the opposite would be negative n, and you're adding that to negative 3, just put negative n minus 3. Okay? And if you happen to be doing your you know, algebra problems on mom's beautiful uh, wall, just go like this, you know, just, you know, mom, I was just doing my algebra, you know? Okay, anyway, I'm not responsible for that. Okay. All right, see you guys next time. Take care.